A sunny evening on a Cornish beach. But something's coming, something the sunbathers aren't expecting. The safety is the biggest issue here, and uh, this is the most dangerous thing they'll do, because in reality, they would be doing this at night on a, a foreign coast or maybe onto some, some rocks. So they need to slowly progress, start off in the daylight without any equip equipment or weapons, and then move up to full tactical cereals at night. Until recently, Major Andrew Atkinson was the officer commanding the landing craft squadron, the squadron's training for its part in the D-Day commemorations in France. In a couple of weeks' time, they'll retrace the steps of 4-7 Commando, sailing via Portsmouth and landing on the 6th of June at Gold Beach in Normandy. The Marines will talk to veterans in Portsmouth and will meet the last surviving D-Day landing craft driver in France. And while they're on the way to France, their training still continues. There's three distinct training courses taking place right now simultaneously. One for sergeants, one for corporals and one for marines. Some of these men have been in training for eight years. Sergeant Fraser is one of the instructors for today. He's proud of the work his marines have achieved. It's just a method of inserting troops onto the ground. We've got very d different boats. We've got Orcs, offshore raiding craft, LCVP, um, different craft, but this is the base level. Mainly used for wreckies or, you know, sneaky beaky stuff, dropping lads on the ground. It's a routine training exercise, but one that holds a special significance in this anniversary year. I don't think the general public understands D-Day fully. I think most people think of D-Day and they just associate it with Saving Private Ryan. And they don't realise how big the UK's part was in D-Day. Of the 4,000 ships, 80% were Royal Navy. Two-thirds of the landing craft were driven by Royal Marines. Over half the troops landed were British and um, Her Dominion Canada. So Britain's the lead for D-Day. And in my humble opinion, it's the greatest military achievement of all time. And it's something the younger generations need to know. And there's only a few veterans left. So it's important for us to remember their deeds before there are no more. Training continues well into the night and they'll return in a few days when the surf is higher and the conditions more challenging. Only then will they be ready to make the journey across the channel to France to take their place in the commemorations. Jeff Moody, GB News.